Number one, the Proverbs 31 woman. Proverbs 31, 10. An excellent wife who can find, for her worth is far above jewels. Proverbs 31 provides a detailed metaphor of feminine wisdom in the context of a family and a community. The chapter discusses the woman who is now known as the Proverbs 31 woman. The chapter begins with King Lemuel recounting advice given to him by his mother. In verses 10 to 31, Lemuel is given a clear description of the kind of woman he should look for, and his mother emphasizes that such women are very rare. The Bible considers two things to be more valuable than rubies. The virtue of wisdom, Proverbs 3.15, and a woman of noble character. A woman who is more valuable than rubies is one who possesses rare and valuable godly characteristics. The question, a wife of noble character who can find, indicates that the reader will have to look long and hard for such a wife. Lamuel's mother is denoting that this is the rarest woman you would find. What makes her say this? Proverbs 31 goes into great detail describing the attributes of a wife who is more precious than rubies, the kind of woman the wise young man should seek. Proverbs 31, 11. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. The husband had complete faith in his wife, entrusting his heart to her. As a result, he could confidently go about his daily routines. He does not feel that going after spoils will lead to a happy home. Proverbs 31, 12. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Her love, founded on good principles, is unchangeable. Proverbs 31, 13. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. This means that she not only works hard, but also enjoys doing so. Not because she has no assistance and is obligated to do her own tasks. On the contrary, she is portrayed as wealthy and the head of a large household, but because she believes that labor is a duty for all and that idleness violates a universal law. Proverbs 31:14. She is like the merchant's ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She is like the merchant's ships. She is like them in that she extends her operations beyond her immediate neighborhood, bringing her food from afar, buying in the best markets and on advantageous terms, without regards to distance, and always looking to make an honest profit. Proverbs 31.15 She riseth also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maidens. In eastern homes, a lamp is always kept burning at night, and because it is so small, the careful housewife must rise at midnight to replenish the oil, and she often begins her household work by grinding the corn and preparing something for the next day's meals. The quality of food we eat affects our energy, therefore she had the responsibility of the quality of life of those close to her. Proverbs 31, 16. She considereth a field, and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands she planteth a vineyard. She focuses her attentions on a specific field, the possession of which is desirable for some reason, and she purchases it after careful examination and consideration. Christ's parable of the treasure hidden in a field, for which the finder sold everything he owned, comes to mind. Verse 16 also depicts the act of independence and proactiveness as she purchases assets with her own money. Her prudent management and economy enable her to purchase vines and plant a vineyard, increasing her output. It's possible that she sees the field she's been given as better suited for grapes than corn and cultivates it accordingly. The woman described in Proverbs 31 knows her value and takes care of herself, recognizing that she cannot care for others if she neglects her own physical and spiritual well-being. She makes sure to maintain a respected appearance in her community, but her most important asset is her devotion to godliness. Number 2. Abigail Also popularly called the unforgettable woman, Abigail was a truly inspiring woman, Whenever we are tempted to forget the importance of having a valuable teammate, 
the story of Abigail is bound to stop us in our tracks and bring us a more profound understanding or clarity about the power of good influences in our lives. She was the woman whose hospitality, knowledge and independence saved her husband when he acted foolishly before David, the soon-to-be king of Israel. Everyone makes mistakes at some point in their lives, but having wise counsel can prevent bad situations from getting worse. Following the death of the prophet Samuel, David went down to the wilderness of Paran in the southern part of Judah, possibly to get away from Saul and his murderous schemes. As customary, Nabal was shearing his sheep there, and David sent some young men to ask for a gift in exchange for the protection he had provided for Nabal's flock. But Nabal's response to David's servants was so selfish and rude that David became enraged and marched towards Carmel with about 400 men to punish Nabal and his household. 1 Samuel 25, 12-35, New American Standard Bible. So David's young men made their way back and returned, and they came and informed him in accordance with all these words. Then David said to his men, Each of you strap on his sword. So each man strapped on his sword, and David also strapped on his sword, and about 400 men went up behind David, while 200 stayed with the baggage. Now one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers from the wilderness to greet our master, and he spoke to them in anger. Yet the men were very good to us, and we were not harmed, nor did anything go missing as long as we went with them, while we were in the fields. They were a wall to us both by night and by day. All the time we were with them, tending the sheep. Now then, be aware and consider what you should do because harm is plotted against our master and against all his household, and he is such a worthless man that no one can speak to him. Then Abigail hurried and took two hundred loaves of bread and two jugs of wine and five sheep already prepared, and five measures of roasted grain, and a hundred cakes of raisins, and two hundred cakes of figs, and she loaded them on donkeys. Then she said to her young men, Go on ahead of me, Behold, I am coming after you. But she did not tell her husband Nabal, and it happened as she was riding on her donkey and coming down by the hidden part of the mountain, that behold, David and his men were coming down toward her. So she met them. Now David had said, It is certainly for nothing that I have guarded everything that this man has in the wilderness, so that nothing has gone missing of all that belonged to him, for he has returned me evil for good. May God do so to the enemies of David and more so if by morning I leave alive as much as one male or any who belong to him. When Abigail saw David, she hurried and dismounted from her donkey and fell on her face in front of David and bowed herself to the ground. She fell at his feet and said, On me alone, my lord, be the blame, and please let your slave speak to you and listen to the words of your slave. Please do not let my lord pay attention to this worthless man Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and stupidity is with him. But I, your slave, did not see the young men of my Lord whom you sent. Now then, my Lord, as the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, since the Lord has restrained you from shedding blood and from avenging yourself by your own hand, now then may your enemies and those who seek evil against my Lord be like Nabal. And now let this gift which your servant has brought to my Lord be given to the young men who accompany my Lord. Please forgive the offence of your slave, for the Lord will certainly make for my Lord an enduring house, because my Lord is fighting the battles of the Lord, and evil will not be found in you all your days. Should anyone rise up to pursue you and to seek your life, then the life of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of the living with the Lord your God. But the lives of your enemies he will sling out as far the hollow of a sling. And when the Lord does for my Lord in accordance with all the good that he has spoken concerning you and appoints you ruler over Israel, this will not become an obstacle to you or a troubled heart to my Lord, both by having shed blood without cause and by my Lord's having avenged himself. When the Lord deals well with my Lord, then remember your slave. Then David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who sent you this day to meet me, 
and blessed be your discernment, and blessed be you, who have kept me this day from bloodshed and from avenging myself by my own hand. Nevertheless, as the Lord God of Israel lives, who has restrained me from harming you, if you had not come quickly to meet me, there certainly would not have been left to Nabal until the morning light as much as one male. So David accepted from her hand what she had brought him and said to her, Go up to your house in peace. See, I have listened to you and granted your request. David was bent on destroying Nabal and everything he owned if it wasn't for the timely intervention of his wife Abigail, who read the situation, anticipated David's response, and quickly took steps to avert the impending calamity set to befall her family. What if she had sided with her husband to the point of risking the destruction of their entire family, instead of holding him accountable for his actions? If Abigail hadn't spoken up, David may have sought revenge against her for her husband's disrespect and lack of gratitude. However, she did speak up, and all issues were resolved. Nabal's wife may have excelled in relationships, but Nabal floundered. Their marriage illustrates that opposites do attract. Nabal was aware that David had saved his people from the Philistines and Goliath. Additionally, he knew that David was the anointed king of Israel and had been protecting his men and property. However, Nabal still refused to return the favor. She moved forward in God's courage. 1 Samuel 25, 18 tells us, Abigail lost no time. She was humble and kind. Abigail knew that her words and actions were powerful and she carefully considered each one. She recognized that the larger picture of this story was far more important than that one moment. So she reminded David of how important it was that God was constructing greatness in his life and that the Lord himself was fighting for David. She would hear David's stories, that Saul had sought his life, that David had slain a giant with a sling, and had spoken in such a way as to bring him back to God's bigger picture. God fought for Abigail, just as he does for us today. He did not abandon her, but instead showed her great favor in David's eyes. This is why it is necessary to have a spouse, friend or teammate that makes us accountable and helps us to be responsible. In closing, our question for the day. What's a worship song that has helped you feel closer to God?